Hello, in this video I will provide a short note on the sparsity, hierarchy and heredity principles that we can use during the analysis of factorial designs. And these principles are especially important during the analysis of unreplicated designs and also during uh, fractional factorial designs, where we have more subjectivity that come into play uh, and affect our decisions when we are deciding on which factors, or sorry, which effects that are uh, active or significant. I will start with an example first to explain the principles. So assume first that we have run a 2 to the 4 design, so we have 4 factors in, uh, each on 2 levels. We can estimate 15 effects, uh, 4 main effects, and 6 2 factor interactions, 4 3 factor interactions, and 1 4 factor interaction. And here in, in uh, this uh, figure, then the size of the white boxes here is a way to try to uh, show the relative size of the effect estimates. So in this case, um, the esti estimated effect of A is the largest uh, of these 15 effects. Now, first, the effect sparsity principle it states that <coughs> normally only a few of the effects are active. Uh, this is indicated here, like, let's say that these five effects are found to be active. And the the analysis of unreplicated designs, uh, it rests on this assumption. Uh, for example, when we use a normal probability plot of the estimated effects, and we try to, to decide on which uh, effects we want to believe in or, or which effects we are considering to be active. This analysis is actually based on the fact that we normally do not have too many active effects. So the sparsity principle is, is, um, is acting on, on that analysis. Um, if we go to effect hierarchy, it states that lower order effects are more likely to be active a priori or beforehand. Before we know anything, it is more likely for a main effect to be active than a two-factor interaction. It is more likely for a two-factor interaction to be active than a three-factor interaction, and so on. <coughs> the third principle, uh, effect heredity, it states that an interaction is more likely to be active if its parents, parent factors are active. So, in this case, for example, uh, if B, C is, is under consideration to be active, <coughs> it is more likely that it, it is active if both B and C as main effects are also active uh, by themselves, so to say, so to speak. So, um, effect heredity um, is, um, is a useful principle when we are, we are analyzing fractional factorial designs where we might have effect analyzing. So we, we have to decide, for example, if, if it is B, C or some allies defect that we uh, want to consider to be active. Um, so there you have it, the three, um, the, the three principles, effect, sparsity, hierarchy and, re and heredity during the analysis. Um, another related topic uh, is the hierarchical principle during model building. Uh, this is a bit different, and this is a quote or citation from uh, Montgomery's book and the supplemental text material to that book. And it states that the hierarchy principle, then during model building, that is, um, it means that if a model contains a higher order term, like a two factor interaction, for example, then it should also contain all the terms of lower order that comprise it. So the two main effects, for example, in the two-factor interaction. So if a second-order term such an in, uh, as an interaction is in the model, then all main effects involved in that interaction, as well as all, all lower-order interactions involving those factors, should also be included in the model. So once again, let's say we have two-factor interaction AB is significant, and the main effect of B is found significant, <coughs> but not the main effect of A. Then we have a choice to go with an hierarchical model and also include A as a main effect in that model. 
uh, and and uh, uh, adhering to the hierarchical principle uh, in model building or we can choose not to include a and go with a non-hierarchical model so uh, what are the arguments in favor for uh, hierarchical models then well hierarchical models belong to the family of well formulated polynomials and for these the estimations estimation space of uh, a, a polynomial regression model is invariant under coding transformations of the predictor variables if the model is found is, is well formulated that is and a consequence of, of um, using not well formulated polynomials uh, is that measures of good, such as good, goodness of fit, um, uh, for example, R squared, it can be artificially raised or lowered uh, by shifting the origin of the predictor variables. So, for example, if we have a predictor variable or a, a factor uh, measured in Celsius and we go to Fahrenheit, um, then this might shift uh, or this sh shifts the origin of the predictor variable and might affect then uh, for example the r squared uh, so that's that's the argument of, of trying to keep the the polynomials well formulated or hierarchical uh, and so on another question then is that can we use non-hierarchical models then yes we can and we should if for example, a non-hierarchical model has better adjusted coefficients of determination or better predict, uh, prediction ability. So we should always look at uh, goodness of fit measures such as R squared adjusted and R squared predicted. And if it is the case that a non-hierarchical model has better uh, values on these measures, then that's a good argument of going with a, with a non-hierarchical model then. So we should not be um, afraid of going with non-hierarchical models if, if uh, that model has much better uh, values on these measurements, for example. Okay, with that I conclude this, um, this shorter note on, on these um, principles uh, that are important during the analysis and also during model building. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.